Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, do not stop him. For no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against them is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter my main than to have two hands and go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lane than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of the Lord. But these are really strong readings. And I didn't want to let them go by. You may have noticed we also read from the Old Testament today, and we don't always do that. But this is a fantastic story. In fact, it's one of my favorites. I just love these whiny people. They've just been released from slavery, for God's sakes. And they're out there whining about manna from heaven. I mean, these days, we use that as a phrase. Oh, it's manna from heaven. It's an unexpected grace from God. They're complaining about the manna from heaven. And they say, oh, we remember the fish we used to eat and eat them for nothing. They've completely forgotten that the price of the fish was slavery. <laughs> so, And then here's Moses. They all come to Moses. They're all convincing to Moses. And he's going, Oi, beg God, what are you doing sending me these people? Did I give birth to them? No. Why am I responsible for these whiny people? Let them get themselves out of the desert. And just kill me now. He sounds like an old, cantankerous Jewish grandmother, doesn't he? Yes. But in fact, it reminded me of a joke, a Jewish joke, to uh, illustrate the meaning of the Yiddish word kvetch. There are two old ladies, and being an old lady myself, I get tired of old lady jokes, but it works here, okay? Two old ladies are in a restaurant, and they're just complaining about the food in front of them. One of them says, the food here is terrible, and the other one goes, yes, and the portions are small. <laughs> <laughs> so that to illustrate what kvetching is it's when you're complaining about dumb things as a leader I know that I have times in my job where it feels like I'm leading the people of Moses where no matter what I do they're not happy Someone doesn't like their, their office because it's too noisy, I move them to a quieter part of the building. It's too quiet, or it's too cold, or it's too far out of the way from the bathroom, whatever. There's, there's always someone for whom God's grace, or man, is never sufficient. But the bigger sin that we see in these readings and beyond our comprehension is God's grace. The bigger sin is when we block that grace from each other. Because the Moses story goes on from the convention to God multiplying His grace among the people. That's how He responds. 
response to this complaint? It doesn't change the manna into fish and cucumbers, you know. But he does take some of this burden off of Moses and spreads the grace around. And then what happens? Someone comes out and says, Moses, those people are prophesying that you're God. Moses is saying, over here is doing my job. And yet, thousands of years later, in Jesus' day, the disciples do the exact same thing. Jesus, Jesus, don't want to tattle, but this guy over here, he's healing people in your name, and we don't know him. He's not one of us. And what does Jesus say? That is the least of your worries. See, God's grace is all sufficient, but it is also not something to be grasped out, to act like this is all yours, because that's not what it's for. I think we've all known somebody who had a ministry and couldn't let it go. In the nonprofit world where I work, we call that founder's syndrome. And I've seen nonprofits collapse and die because the founder of the ministry could not let it go. Could not stand to let somebody else have the grace of God to carry it forward. They had to keep that grace with themselves. And I think we've all seen in a church <coughs> or other group where someone had a job. Might be the altar guild, might be the acolytes, might be the summer picnic, whatever. They have that job. And by gum, everyone's going to do it the way they do it, the way they've done it for years. And no one's ever going to let anyone take that job from them. <coughs> We've all seen it. And you know what it does? It kills the job. It kills the ministry. Because young people, and I mean young in the faith, not young in years, but the, the little children of Christ who come in eager and ready to help, they get slammed down. No, 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 no. That's not how you polish that. That's not how we set this up. That's not what we serve on Saturdays. And you have blocked the grace of God from what of God's children. And that's the mill set set. And we've all done it. I mean, I should speak for myself, but I know I've done it. I know there are times when I'm more concerned about my territory than about expanding the grace. And I know that there are times when God's grace has been more than sufficient and I've still found something to complain about. But this week, just this week, let's take these readings with us and let's think about not only how sufficient and all-encompassing God's grace is for us. But let's concentrate on channeling that grace and making it flow right through us to others, to the young in the faith, to those that Christ does to pull into his lap. Amen. Amen.